Will Asians ever be an impactful voting bloc in America or will they remain invisible? David, this article says that things are changing. It's election season. And the New York Times just dropped a banger of article going viral in the Asian community right now. Asian Americans are often invisible in polling. That's changing. Without much survey data, there's little information on what issues matter to Asian Americans. We are going to get into this because there were some very interesting comments from Reddit. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Sauce at SmileLostSauce.com. Sold out right now from Sichuan to Sicily. Andrew, um, when Dr. Michelle Ao ran for state senate in Georgia, mm-hmm. somebody in her own party as a consultant told her, don't worry about Asians. They don't vote. And that's crazy because she's Asian. Right. And in, she doubled the Asian American turnout for her particular seat. And she ended up being the first Asian American woman to be elected to the state senate. So Ooh. she had something to say being like, they told me to not worry about it, even though I'm Asian myself. Mm. And it worked. Dude. So, but... Then the article kind of goes into why it has been difficult for politicians to, one, care about the Asian electorate, and number two, even gather data on the Asian electorate in terms of what they really feel and want. Because when it comes to elections, and especially the larger the election, like presidential election, there's so many people that are strategists trying to figure out, yo, this voting block, this city, this county, this demographic, how do you appeal? Right, all the the money ball factors. Hey, like, uh, why don't you learn some Spanish phrases, you know, make them feel more comfortable. What if you say, happy Lunar New Year, you know what I mean? So I guess everybody's trying to figure out how to attract people. It's kind of like essentially marketing tactics, right? Like you're trying to market yourself as a candidate to this group of people, but because Asia and because of a bunch of reasons that we're going to list, so stay tuned, why it's been hard to figure out the Asian group. Now, yes, maybe- yes, yes. It's been hard to figure out the group despite the numbers in population changing from 2000 to 2022. Wow. Asians in America, Andrew, plus 94%. David, David Asians- our, our, got our minds locked up, man. You can't figure us out. We're like a Rubik's Cubes. Ooh. Um, the smaller the survey sample, the higher margin of error. Error. So they're saying scientifically, Andrew, the polling experts, they feel like, man, our stats on Asians got a high margin of error. I can't figure out what these black-haired people be thinking. Um, so basically, there's a lot of techniques in science data analysis okay. called oversampling. That's what you do when you don't have a lot of sample size. You need to oversample. You need you to need, sample more. You need to oversample. But they're saying there's a lot of money and sort of resource concerns when it comes to oversampling the Asian population because so much of it is from Asia and would need to be done in language. How do you identify who's going to pick up the phone, what language they're going to speak? It's different. Like Latinos, they're almost all going to speak Spanish, right? And, and Except I w- for Brazilians, they're going to speak Portuguese. I will say this, guys. I think that even though a lot of Asians in America can speak English enough to run simple business off of, like serve you food or sell you something, a lot of them don't want to pick up the phone and answer a survey in English because they just don't trust the survey. Oh, dude, our parents, they stay hanging up the phone, right? Yeah, and they speak English. Our parents speak English and they still don't want to do the survey. Right, and a lot of Asians are actually very uncomfortable sharing their political opinions with a random stranger over the phone. It's not like a hell yeah, let me tell you what's on my mind type Uh, attitude, right? Okay, so we got a whole list of reasons, David, why it's been hard to figure out Asians, right? As we've kind of been talking about. Um, And then also I want to talk about what I think Asians generally want. And this is me just polling my friends and from what I understand about the Asian population having lived as an Asian. And I think it's fairly simple. But David, continue with the reasons on why it's been hard to get a read on the Asians. Well, Asians until recently, and you could still argue that recently it's barely become statistically advantageous to study Asians because a scientific sample size is one out of 14. That means you have to hit 7% to be like, scientifically notable of a population that's worth sampling. Asians are finally reaching that 7% mark, Mm. Andrew, just in 2024. Mm, mm. But here's the thing. They're saying a lot of Asians possibly may not care about politics. Right. So they might not even have opinions on key issues that other Americans have strong opinions about. And by the way, when we're saying Asians in America, you have to understand there's a lot of Asians that move to America. A lot of these Asians in this block are immigrant Asians. They're not all American born. A lot of them, actually, most of them are immigrants. And a lot of people were saying that once the Asian Americans reach second generation, they're simply going to vote based on like uh, adapting to another group. Mm. For example, they're either going to become like a liberal tech bros 
political opinions or a rich small business owners typically you know they lean right the rich tech bros they lean left mm. so basically they're gonna adapt to like whatever archetype they became closest to in the second gen okay okay um so basically there a lot of people are listing out andrew all these granular reasons why they can't oversample the Asian population. They can't get a read on what they want because they can't do the in-language surveys because it's too way too complicated. You call somebody who has a certain last name, how do you know if they speak Urdu, Hindi, or Bengali, right? You know, I'm talking about for the people who are doing the polling. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what robocaller to give you. So basically, those are the reasons why it's hyper difficult to figure mm. out what the group wants, mm. Andrew. But you think you know what people want. And by the way, I, I got a response to you after you think you know. All right. So I've said this in multiple videos before, guys. I generally think in no particular order, but Asian voters generally care about safety and crime economic opportunities, possibly meaning, hey, uh, feeling like I can open up businesses, um, uh, uh, where Asians are very entrepreneurial, um, maybe taxes are not too high on small businesses, educational opportunities, feeling like that not only do the top universities or just any university want to accept more Asians, but that they're going to not discriminate against us for being Asian, right? And then also motherland geopolitics, racism, and celebrating Asian culture. To me, this is all in another block where it's kind of like the general vibe. Does this group, now unfortunately there's only two groups in America, Republican and Democrat, maybe the third party, shout out to the forward party, but you know, that's not on the same level yet, let's be honest. So between the two groups, which one of these two groups feels more welcoming and celebrates Asian culture more? Usually that leans left. Right. But some of the, the other Democrats things, run that plan right. better. Whether you say it's genuine in their yeah. hearts or it's just a gimmick tactic, they run but, it better. But this is why it's confusing because the first things I named, safety, economics, and educational fair admissions, generally some people could argue that that's more what the right wing or the Republicans are doing a better job of. Yes. But- but with that said, that's why it's kind of confusing. What? And that's why a lot of people, even though they're like, well, Asians generally have conservative values. How come they don't all vote conservative? I'm like, guys, there's also the whole gun thing that which also kind of makes things unsafe for Asians. And then also there's like the racism thing that Asians notice. So there's there's the other factors working against the Republicans. Well, it seems like Asians seem really conflicted. If you go issue by issue, it's like, oh, this issue, that party supports it. This yes. issue, that party supports it. So yes. they feel super torn. Here's where I'll fight fight you on this, Andrew. Okay. You said this is what Asian voters care about. I think what you just listed off is what Asians care about, but not necessarily Asian voters. Mm. Because there is such a huge gap because Asians vote the least out of any group in America. There's actually a disconnect between Asians that are politically activated and Asians that are not politically activated, even though what I believe what you said is true to an extent for the majority of just Asian people in America. So what do you think? All right. So what I do you think, think the Asians Asian that voters... vote are way more generally, I don't know how to even say this, woke than the non-voting Asians. You're right. Well, because I guess Asian voter turnout still, even though it's starting to even out, is still leaning uh, Democrat. It's right. true. Right. But it's that like, I believe the less than half of Asians vote. Right, so you're saying, obviously, we understand not a lot of Asians in America vote, not a huge amount. No, they're not, like, I would say a lot of Asians, Andrew, when you talk to them, they don't even know who the politicians are sometimes. Right, so you're saying a lot of Asians who may, if, if David, hypothetically, so this is based off your theory and what we're debating right here, is that if all Asians of a voting age had to vote, had to vote, were forced to vote. Mandatory. What do you think... You think it, it would, would be closer be, to a 50-50 split. You think it'd be very 50-50 between left and right. Okay. I think it would be very, very close instead of 75-25 that it is right now. Um, let's get in the comments section. Somebody said, sometimes I wonder if the Asian American experience is what it's like when you're thinking about everyone else, but nobody else is thinking about you. That is a quote from Steven Yoon, the actor. Yeah. And somebody was saying that that's really what it is because Asian Americans are forced to analyze white issues, black issues, Latino issues, but nobody's ever thinking about Asian issues because we're the smallest group. We're a small group and we haven't identified which block we're on. We're kind of on our own world. We don't fit on the binary And even if all Asians did white, vote, black. Andrew, and they split 50-50, why would people still cater to them? Because you, you always know that that group that's only 7% is going to go 3.5. Right, 3 so in a weird way the asian voting block being so kind of on the fence about things it kind of makes people be like 
listen, man, we kind of want the Asians, but we have no idea which way they will lean, so we're not even going to cater to them. Right. And like I said, I think it really goes down to socioeconomics, but even how you made the socioeconomics. Like, let's say you make 500K a year on your small business, you're probably going to be Republican. You make 500K a year as a tech lead, you're probably going to go liberal. So let's talk about, we'll talk about at the end after we go through the comments about how Asians can be a more powerful voting bloc. But continue, Dave. Somebody said that, uh, I don't even know, man. People lie on polls. Most Asians that are registered to vote are, like, under the age of 30, mm. like, or, or under the age of 40 for sure. So just because the older generation, like we said, they kind of just got here. They're just, they're happy to be here, but just don't ask them a bunch of nuanced questions on this issue leans right left, this leans mm. issues right. They're just like, oh, I don't want to think about this. Or maybe they might only want to think about motherland politics. Yo, what if? When Asians voted and only Asians, there was no political party tied to the issues. And then you just had Asians check off which issues they, how they feel about each issue. And then the voting had to figure out which one that leads more into. Obviously, they would never do this, but this is a funny scenario in my brain. Right. Um, somebody said that, interestingly enough, when Kamala was picked... Kamala was picked because she was half Indian because all the swing states such as uh, such as Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania in the Midwest have a gigantic Indian population. So they were saying the DNC picked Kamala even though Joe Biden did not like Kamala personally because she went so hard on, him, hard on him in the primaries. So there was her Indian identity did come into play in her pick as a VP. Mm, in the swing states. So really, if Asians live in the swing states, then it's definitely significant. Yes, you will get catered to given that you're in a swing state. Yeah, if you live in a swing state, you will get catered to even way more. So let's say, for example, Georgia was a swing state. The Asians in Georgia would mean more. Right. And there is a decent amount of Asians in Georgia now. Remember one time we met a guy who tried to start a nonprofit organization to convince Asians to move to swing states so they could like make up a larger portion of the electorate in swing states. And I just remember being like... I just don't think anybody's moving for that, man. Well, what kind of life? Are you, I mean, you're going to pay me like a million dollars to move? That? What's going on? Right. Um, somebody was saying, you know, it's interesting because Asians are increasingly getting their way into the upper middle class. They have enor enormous buying power in America. Look at Costco catering to it. But at the end of the day, it's more on an economic level and not an electorate level. Like mm -hmm. the catering to Asians is... Like, like we said, the numbers have been jumping 94% in the past 20 years, but yeah. all the catering is going to be in terms of products, not political products. But, but maybe, maybe products and then political. I mean, I think, they're, I think they are somewhat tied together, not loosely tied together, because the more products you want to sell a group, I mean, hopefully that, that, that group of people become more involved in voting. And once they become a voting once they register to vote, then they become somebody that you have to cater to. You know, we uh, started stocking the Lexus hybrids at Costco. You could buy a Lexus hybrid car at Costco, but uh, I don't know. They're still, we're still waiting to see them show up at the polls on voting day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, ultimately, in 2024, here's my takeaway, Andrew. I think that Asians, due to science and uh, other people studying Asians, right, there's a more nuanced understanding of our issues in terms of why it's too difficult to be cohesive as a you know, voting block, but it's not necessarily going to change the reality that it is difficult to be a cohesive voting block, but there's more granularity in the data so we can understand why. You mean Because now I even know, I didn't even know about oversampling and why oversampling is not economically feasible to run on Asians due to the different motherland origin tongues and mm. stuff like that. So I'm just like, I'm saying there's a deeper understanding, but it's not necessarily going to change the bird's eye. Right, right. I guess more people acknowledge that Asians are a confusing group to cater to sometimes in a political sense, but that doesn't change that they're a confusing group to cater to. Right. Um, but it does matter, obviously, on a local level. If you are in swing states, I don't know if that Kamala theory is like fully sound, but yeah. you know, there's some logic to it. Like there may be certain groups that are maybe more activatable than others. Like they might, if let's just say that Kamala thing was true, guess what? If Trump picks Vivek Ramaswamy, how does that play in the Daisy community that is very large in the swing states? Do you see what I'm saying? But no. then does it matter? Are the political analysts going to st st need to start looking at Vivek being Hindu versus Nikki Haley being Punjabi who converted to Christian? You know what I mean? Like all right, these right, like right. hyper granular 
identitarian things that if you're not in those communities, in those states, you would have no read on what's going on within their fishbowl or how they're perceiving things. I mean, when we're talking about Asians becoming more impactful in a voting block, it's just that Asians have to vote more. Isn't that the truth, though? But I feel like people want Asians to vote blindly, which is to on either side. No, but so, the and, more... And that's, that's what they want because they don't want to start changing their agendas to cater to this, like, weird, like, really centrist group, I guess. But then wouldn't that be interesting if Asians... Brought the centrism... Were always yeah. swing voters. What if Asians were often swing voters? Like, they just swung depending on... But then that also requires them to be educated about policies. But I'm saying, if all Asians had to vote, like we said, it'd be more 50-50. So you're saying it still wouldn't change the fact that Asians are just confused, like, kind of unclear. No, that because Asians I'm saying split. the political, like, money ball people, they like groups that vote, like, 90% one way or the other. That's what they like. And so you're they saying can Asians it. will never... It doesn't seem like Asians are going to be voting heavily in one way anytime soon. In unless, any sort of large number. So that's why I think that Asians voting will always matter on a hyper local level, but on a very large scale thing outside of like very unique circumstances, potentially the, that we're under, under right now. I, I just don't know if it's ever going to turn into a large national voting block. What if all Asians voted for their own party? <laughs> the Boba Tea Party. Yeah, the Bubble Tea Party. All right. Uh. I guess that's interesting. Everybody let us know what you think in the comments down below because obviously it is election season. And uh, just thinking about where Asians fall, you know, hopefully all these conversations just mean that, you know, if you comment and you feel super strongly about your political views, maybe you should make sure you vote. Because I feel like there's a lot of comments that we get. People are like, they feel very strongly about where they stand, whether left or right. That's cool. But like, what, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. I'm against voting. Anyway, man, that's our point of disagreement that we have. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace.